Well, they told him when he, he first of all, he got uh, mycosis fungoides, which is a non-Hodgkin's. We thought he went to the hospital for appendicitis, and they found another growth, and that was a carcinoid, carcinoid cancer. And they took out a big chunk of his intestine, about two feet of it, and it was full of the seeds. And I said, oh my gosh. Well, he was in the hospital two months. They operated on him. Then he got a fistula. He just had problem after problem. He was there for a couple of months. And I said, oh, what about this carcinoid cancer with all these seeds in there? And they said, the non-Hodgkins will take him before that. You'll never have to worry about that. Every time we get better, we go on a trip. I mean, bit good enough to go. I know he went not feeling good sometimes. As soon as he got the cancer, we went to Israel. Then we went to Africa on a safari. We just and we just did everything we could, and and he just kept living on and on. And his doctor told me, "You're keeping him alive." <laughs> he kept and because I said, "Yeah, I can't do without him." And he'd say, "What will my wife do without me if I, you know?" But I mean, I was. I could do, can't get along, but it was, I never wanted to be, I didn't like to be alone. I never have liked to be alone. But I've done fine even since he died, a lot better than I thought I would. But that was just, you know, the way it was. We, he always said that we, he knew that he picked me out in heaven. He always said that, I know that we were supposed to get married. I know we were, and I'd say, oh, you know, I, I mean, and later I thought, well, maybe so, because we sure got along good. We, we did have a good marriage. I was very fortunate. Do you want me to tell you about the children a little bit? And then you can too, LJ. We have four. Linda is our only girl, and she was first. And that was such a happy, happy, happy day when she was born. Because LJ has all brothers, and I had all brothers. So we were really, really happy to get a little girl. And uh, <clears throat> he found out about it from me being so excited. They didn't used to let the fathers in, but my mom and dad and LJ were all standing by the door. And they heard me say, it's a girl. And I just couldn't have been more thrilled to have a little girl. And that's the only one we got. We got three boys, which we were all plenty happy when each of them were born too. And Linda lives in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and she has six children. She's married to Jerry Schwegler, and they're just doing really good, and uh, we just love all our kids and our grandchildren, and we felt so bad when they moved from Salt Lake to Oklahoma because she had all the grandchildren. And then John, he's our second, and um, he has one, one boy, Tyler, and he's an attorney here in, in town. And he's had quite a life. He's, he's, he's a neat guy, and we're thankful for him. And then we have Mark, and he's always been kind of a little, was a sunshine boy. He's always been, he was fun, fun to raise. And, He's married to Jackie, and they have four boys, and she's due in January, and she's, ho well, I don't know if they're hoping for a girl or not. The kids think that you ought to be able to choose the four-year-old, and he thinks it ought to be a girl, and we all think it would be nice, but we'll be really, really happy to have a little boy. We're just excited to get another baby in our family because it's been four years, so we're anxious for that. And... Then we have Robert, and he has, he's married to Amy, and they have three children, Madison, Brianne, and, and Bronson, and we just enjoy their kids a lot and get to see them more often because they're closer by. They live in Riverdale, and he has the pawn shop in Riverdale, and he's also a bondsman. And Mark makes lots of loans and stuff too, and real estate. And LJ has always done real estate and had rentals and things, and that's how he really accumulated enough money to lend to anybody to to start the pawn shops. And uh, we just, our children and our grandchildren are just our lives. We just love them. That's 
but we that's our enjoyment is from our family we just really love to be around them and and I don't know I should have told you that Linda's children are are Craig and he just got married so we just had our first grandchild get married and he's our oldest one and then and he just graduated from college in Oklahoma at Telequan. I can't remember the name of the college. Do you, LJ? I don't. And, and he has a sister, Kristen, who's in college. She'll be graduating next year. And a brother, Michael, that will be graduating next year also. Kristen and Michael are just 10 months apart, and they've always been close. And Kristen was our first granddaughter and second grandchild and we're happy to get her we've got we have and then we have Sean and Scott and Michelle from that family we have four granddaughters all together and ten grandsons so we are a little long on grandsons and then Mark's children are are Josh who has his 13th birthday today and then they have Zachary and and, uh, oh, gosh, cut this. <laughs> Cade and Jackson. <laughs> oh, my word. Did you ever, you said Josh, I guess. Uh, Josh's birthday is today, and he's 13. We're all going out tonight and celebrate and going to dinner with all of the kids and family. And then we're going to see the Scrooge at the Playhouse. Grandchildren are great, and daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws. I talk to my friends and they're always complaining about their daughter-in-laws and their son-in-laws and she did that and he did this and what a terrible choice their kids made on, on I love my daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws son as much as I do my children. They're just wonderful. I I think they did such a great job. They did as well as I did in choosing a mate. They, I've got the best daughter-in-laws and son-in-law you could ever expect to have. Yeah, we do feel that way. We it's say really every great. day how how fortunate we are that our kids chose who they chose. If you could have one more day with them, what would you want to do? Probably just get the whole family together and have a big party. <laughs> probably what I'd want to do. I just say I love you, LJ. I'm, I'm so happy that we were married and I had such a sweet husband. <laughs> Let's say, I know he would say he wants to have an eternal family. I mean, he prayed for that every blessing even. He, I mean, that all of our family could be together. I just want us all to have, to be together to happen, and I, I just have a testimony that somehow it's going to happen. Eternity is a long time, and we have that promise, which if we keep our covenants, that someday we'll have all of our children, and they may have to go through trials and tribulations and the buffetings of Satan, but we will have them, and so we've always felt like we try to be the very best we could, no matter what. So that's the only thing promise that we you know you have you have your kids but you don't know but oh, I've been really fortunate I I have really good kids they're not all really religious but they're all very good individuals and very good I love all of you so very much Linda you've been just such a wonderful daughter and so supportive and always saying lovely things to us and sending us lovely cards and just making us feel like that you love us and you're so happy for the support we've given you and and John you're you're just a good good person too and love you and just want you in heaven with me if I make it I want you there too and Mark I just love you so much and you've always you were just our perfect son and and I, I know you've had your trials and you're probably going through a lot of them right now. But I want you to know that you just always have been a good, good person and I love you very much. And 
I, I, you told me what's in a card. I just looked at my last Mother's Day card and you said, Mother, I know you love me and that means so much. And uh, that means a lot to me. I'm glad I've got your sweet cards and your words you said to me and, and things you've sent. And Robert, you're just a kind, kind person. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're my baby, and I just rely on you a lot, too. And you've been so good to me since your father died. And John, you have, too, and Linda, all of you. And I've got some really, really neat spouses, too, that I just love so much. They're just, we just have a wonderful family, and all the grandchildren I just love all of you so much. You're just like my kids. You're part of me. Well, I think uh, to build our testimony, we have to do the things that we're told. I mean, a testimony can die. It does all the time. Many people leave the church all the time. You have to just keep saying your prayers and reading the scriptures and being kind and good and, and go to church and take the sacrament. It's really important to go to the and take the sacrament every week. That's just renewing your covenants of baptism, and that's very, very important. Keep you just thinking and just being around the right people. Make your friends that you know. You just have acquaintances that help you a lot. We all have that. I mean, your, your dad and I have had family and acquaintances that have just been like your dad's been LJ was in five bishoprics two in the, one in Weber two in Weber State and and then two in different wards and then bishop and uh, those are our very best friends uh, they because you like the same things you do the same things so you usually if you find people that you enjoy, that's why. And you need to seek people that you know Heavenly Father would want you to be with and that will help your testimony grow. And you just have to keep at it every day. You just have to keep being sincere and in your feelings and keeping your covenants and doing the things that you need to do or you can lose your testimony. And so... That's when we just all want to be together because I love being with family. I love all of you so much. That's what I, I know your dad does too. We just want to be an eternal family. Some of the greatest experiences I've had in my life have been involved with church work. And if you miss out on that, You've missed a great part of life and a great part of living and a great part of understanding what life is all about. And uh, the church, uh, the testimony I have of it is the most valuable possession that I own and one that I hope that I'll be able to take with me when I go. But you have to be careful because I've seen some great testimonies shaken and destroyed because of the people who had that testimony not obeying the laws of God and taking advantage of what's here and what's offered to us from our Father in Heaven that brings happiness to us. Uh, it's just nice to know that just down the street, 30 miles, is a prophet of God, and I know he's a prophet. And I hope all my grandchildren do, and my children, because that's the most important knowledge some of the most that they can have, and then Jesus is the Christ. He really did live, and he died, and he died for us.